Already the richest horse race in the English-speaking Caribbean, the Mote Mile Invitational will see an increased purse amount moving from 125,000 US dollars to 150,000 US dollars. That's approximately 23 million Jamaican dollars. Scheduled to have its second staging later this year on the 2nd of December, the Grade 1 event will be contested over a mile and is restricted to horses three years old and upward. Something new has happened and as a part of the dream of creating the richest race in the Caribbean. This year, we're proud to announce once again that we have six horses that have been nominated that have not been domiciled in Jamaica since January 1. Solomon Sharp is the chairman of Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited, the promoters of horse racing in Jamaica. He now joins us to discuss, among other things, the number of overseas-based horses nominated for the event, as well as the notable increase in the purse amount. Welcome to our new studio. Thank you. It's fantastic. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to have you in studio and, of course, yeah. to discuss this. Let's start by talking about the money. So, last year when we announced the race, it was a three-year um, sponsorship deal from the Mute family. And we always knew it was going to be a progressive um, sponsorship. Um, I'm not really supposed to say this, but they were, they were so excited. Um, you know, there were talks like, let's double the money next year. And we said, no, it has to be a natural progression. Um, Lance and I would have been on our own um, sporting events for years. And when you, when you take that big of a leap in the next year, you create a big problem for yourself. Yeah. But um, 150,000 US is nothing to scoff at. Um, the, the gentlemen, the horsemen, the, the stakeholders are very excited about the increase. Um, I got a call earlier today, not just for the increase in person this race, but what, the, what would the undercard look like? Um, Right now, which is subject to change on the pro projections, there's a sprint race. So last year, we barely got 16 runners and with no overseas entrance. So you now have six overseas entrants, and you now have a list that goes down to 28. Mm. And when you look at a horse like Mahogany, who, um, based on what I'm hearing in the morning, he's catching birds, he's now at number 25. So he's nowhere near the first 16. But up to recently, Mahogany was the top-rated horse in Jamaica, up to a few months ago. Top-rated, but he has not been um, racing yes. regularly, so he doesn't have the purse to get in. So we added a, um, provisionally added a sprint race, and I told the connections that come this morning, and says, yes, you know, we'd like to have that sprint race, and I'd like to have it for X, Y, and Z purse. But it's, you know, some of these things are contingent on sponsorship, etc. But we've been doing a lot of work um, behind the scenes, and um, I'm, f I'm happy to be here today to discuss some positive stuff. The last time we were here, yeah. we weren't necessarily in a positive mood, but um, one of the things that I was always positive about was the work that we had put in to bring races like this. And um, there's some other stuff that has happened as a result of or stick into the task. Right, and the Mute Mile is one that I enjoy a lot because I was saying at the top of the show, apart from top class horse racing, there's a lot of glitz, glamour, many other entertainment, you know, different activities. So even if you're not a lover of horse racing, you still attend the Mute Mile because there's something for everybody. How about preparations coming along for that? Last time I was so impressed with the decor, the red carpet, everything. Um, expect nothing less. Um, we're going to up the ante a little bit more this year. Uh, it went absolutely fabulous last year. And um, this year the theme is for kings and queens. Okay. So So thanks for telling me in advance. Yeah, yeah. so I don't know. Who knows? I might turn up as the king of the dance hall, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like you know, that. I hear there's some African kings flying in and, um, you know, 
there's a bunch of crazy stuff that um, based on what I'm hearing. But the plans are, are well advanced. We will have an infield execution again. We will bring that, um, that element of pump and pageantry. We still have a ways to go to get to Royal Ascot. Um, I happened to go there this year on a fact-finding mission. And I think that by next year, we are going to rival the likes of, 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 of these destinations and um, in our own way, because they are steeped in history of how much 100 years. This is the second year of this race. Um, again, just like how we, on, under my stewardship in 2019, I said, you know, I'm going to operate this racetrack like how you train a horse. You start at, you know, the trot, the this, the that, and you, you go through the phases. And we've been going through the phases, and despite, you know, you know, some people getting excited here and there, things are going in an absolutely positive direction. Yeah. I mean, looking at the flashback of last year with uh, Benito Harvey yes. coming with a late run on the inside aboard excessive force for Philip Fiani OD with a, a victory there, hasn't done all that well since winning the um, inaugural Mute Mile last year. And I suspect he may have trouble getting into the to this year's list. He's on the outside looking in. He has a new trainer now, um, um, Sobrati, um, Little Sub, and he says that um, he's going to qualify him. I'm not sure how he's going to do it, but if you remember last year, his route to the Mute Mile, he won the Port Royal Sprint and then um, went to the Mute Mile. And so we still have the Jamaica Cup, we still have the, um, the the newly minted Philip Fiani Gold Cup coming up next week. So I'm not sure what the connections, but there's a lot of banter on the back stretch on who's going to position themselves, how and how they're going to get in and how they want to get in before and what their preparation needs to be and the prep races, etc. So um, there's a lot of bit of there's a lot of excitement I should say on the, um, behind the scenes on the yeah. back stretch. Well last time I believe you had told us that there'll be lights for the Mute Mile. Yeah, so... What's going on with that? Ideally, we wanted lights for the Mute Mile, but um, Caymanus Park is a whole property. Yes. So we, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot more to expend. Um, we, we do operate a lease. So before we do certain things, we have to get the explicit... Um, up, or supposed to get the explicit approval of our landlord because there are certain things to the contract in which we got the lease that must be met. Um, we've potentially, um, we've lived up to a lot more than was in the initial lease, but the initial lease wouldn't have taken into consideration COVID. The, the initial lease wouldn't have been taken into consideration that um, we needed to fix the water on the property, etc. So there are some things that we had to move from and then you know, we have to sit with our landlord and hopefully they'll come up with some spend mm -hmm. as well in the whole, in the whole, in the fact of this, because the place was wired, you know, funny kind of way for mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And um, whilst we have seen the benefit of some part of the, the solar plant, we're not necessarily seeing all the benefits of the solar plant just yet. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to use the benefits of that money to invest in the lights, but that's still on the um, pipeline. Right. And Caymanos Park is really trending. I have quick service restaurants calling me now, wanting to know if they can get on property. And um, I just come from a tourist board um, event all day, dealing with about destination, destination marketing. So if you hear me saying hashtag destination Caymanos Park, that's part of the plan going forward. That was always part of my plan. I put that in a master plan that I presented to the board in um, 2020. I said these things would happen by 2025. We're now in 2023, and we have, we have um, executed at least 85% of that. So the next thing was, how do we manage a full entertainment part of the product? Because sports is entertainment. Yes, correct. But then this is further entertainment with the pomp and pageantry, the hospitality element of it. and. Um, once you've come to Caymanos Park, whether you're a fan of horse racing or not, you leave there with a, with a very positive vibe, you know, and it's even better if you, if you win a dollar. Can you tell me quickly about the Mute family's involvement in this project? Because the Mute family are Trinidad and Tobago originally, aren't they? 
Yeah, but they've been um, originally a, a part of, of Supreme Ventures. Mm -hmm. And um, Mr. Mute, who the race was named after, he was the original owner of Bruce on the Loose. Mm -hmm. yes. So he's an avid... Who, who had run the Classics in Jamaica before transferring as a three-year-old to TNT. And to win the Classic there. Multiple Horse of the Year right. and, and, and track um, record holder at Bruce uh, yeah, at was Santa Rosa in, Park. I think he was buried in the middle of the track. Oh, in Trinidad? At Santa Rosa yeah. Park. Oh. So... You know, they've been involved, and not just in Jamaica and Trinidad, but in North America. He had horses in, um, on Gulfstream Park and some at Woodbine. So they've been very involved, and they have been begging us from 2020 to do this race. COVID came, changed the whole landscape of the, the calendar, and um, last year we were able to slot it in, mm -hmm. found the right. With, with the positioning of these races, you have to plan in advance. So... Within the next few weeks, we're already submitting next year's calendar to the Jamaica Racing Commission. They said, these are the days that we want to race, and these are the prospective dates. Mm -hmm. um, and especially the important races, the grade ones, etc., have to be properly illustrated. Yeah, I got a call last year, could have been in October or November, uh, from someone with horses racing at Woodbine in Canada. Uh, wanting to connect with Supreme Ventures and the Jamaica Racing Commission, re-entering a horse for the Mute Mile, which was going to come up in about five or six weeks. Yes. Um, having said that, can you tell us anything more about the overseas entries already um, committed to the race? Are they, uh, are any of them from ca Canada, or is it more likely to be Florida racing, yeah. which is next door to this? It's North American horses. Well, sorry, American horses, not not Canadian. Yeah. American horses. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's a there's some protocol um, that has to be met, and for the Canadian horses, they would potentially have to come through a quarantine in South Florida yeah. and then head over. Mm -hmm. So, horse racing is a peculiar sport. So when you would want to ship, and then if there's a particular race going on during your season, you might not want to miss that race, and you might want to hop over. Um, ironically, the Mute family had a horse that we approached them to, to run with connections with Taffy Josephs. And he didn't want to give up the horse because he said that there were some stakes races that he wanted to win. And it's easier to not ship and run for $150,000 than to ship and then have to prepare again to run for one hundred and fifty. dollars Because when you do ship, you're in quarantine two weeks in the States. Yes. And then you come and you're in quarantine 10 days here minimum. Um, we would love, I've been to Australia. I've spoken to the, um, the lady who arranges for the shippers. So for the Melbourne Cup, it's a good 65% of the card maybe that comes from outside of Australia. Um, some of them are probably Australian bred horses yes. yeah. that went further afield that ships back in, you know, to win this prestigious cup on, um, on this day. And you have like the Breeders Cup, but most of these horses are still coming from within the same jurisdiction. The horses from, that come from outside the jurisdiction, depending on where they're coming from. So the vet board um, has done a fantastic job in Jamaica at managing all diseases um, that are transmissible. And um, because of their very strict um, quarantine deadlines, um, you know, they've, they've kept us safe, but right. It is not the easiest route to come if you're not well advanced or committed long in advance because you want to come, you want to get acclimatized, you want to feel this racetrack. Not all racetracks are created equal. We just had a consultant come down and um, did examinations of the tracks, sent samples overseas, and he gave us a um, grade one rating Okay, Good. and said that um, he's associated with the tracks like Delmar. I said, hey, I wish you guys would ship me some of this stuff. Mm. So we have a fantastic surface, um, great racetrack, but some of these animals are probably used to a track that has more clay. We have a lot less clay. Um, we use dune sand. And, um, you know, so sometimes you'll see the shippers happening like in Breeders' Cup and, you know, overwhelming favorite. Yeah. And then you maybe have rain on the day or just some other conditions the, you know, a little heat, maybe a little too cold, whatever, and um, the horses don't run. So 
Um, but I know like, like for Gulfstream, they now have a tapita track, which is a, an yes. artificial surface, Correct. which would be a huge adjustment for those horses if horses are coming from Gulfstream Park to race at uh, Caymanas Park. Right, so even, even at Gulfstream Park, you're having specialists on the dirt, specialists on the tapita, and specialists on the grass. So when there's a scratch off of the grass to the tapita, a lot of trainers decide that they're not running on the tapita. If they're not on the grass, they're going to scratch. So um, again, it's the peculiarity with our sport and the fun and games. And you know, just like I see you guys in football jerseys, you know. <laughs> on a Friday. Yeah, what team mm -hmm. you play, home versus away, you know, um, what stadium you're going to, is it a Champions League, is it a Carabao Cup, etc. And you, you, you set your, um, your, your team and your strategy accordingly, you know. But I would have to say though, from a fan perspective, it is tremendously exciting for Jamaican racing fans, the thought of having overseas entries now for a big event. Because for decades, we haven't had that in Jamaica. And so We're, many. Uh, yeah, and, and so many. There was a time in the 80s and 90s when horses from Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados would come to the Super Stakes and race in the Super Stakes and even winning. Mm -hmm. um, so the advent of overseas entries coming to a big event in Jamaica now is something that the local fans haven't, um, experienced in a long time. So we are a, we're a product that's constantly evolving. We would have learned a lot today at the Jamaica Tourist Board destination. So let's go back to it, destination. So the Breeders' Cup is a destination event. Yes. Royal Ascot is a destination event. And the Mote Mile and Cayman Arms Park. Um, well, Cayman Arms Park is a fantastic destination. I think it's the greatest, greatest place on earth. <laughs> but the Mote Mile will definitely be a proper fixture in the tourism area, horse racing area, and just an all-time great place to be at come December 2nd. Um, if you think this year is good, I expect next year to be better. Yeah. When we were speaking to people like Graham Motion at Belmont, he expressed that um, Jamaica Inn is one of his all-time favorites to come to. You know, um, It's one hour from Jamaica Inn to Caymanas Park. And if you were going to stay in Manhattan, it could take you a one-hour drive to get to Belmont Park. So he said, hmm, interesting. So I think we got him at a funny time. But we're going to go on the road immediately after this year's running and start the recruitment because we want to get some more commitments from February, March next year mm -hmm. and, um, and turn it into a, a, a bigger event. Yeah. And this is going to be a real as I said, a real tourism event. If you think of our near, nearest neighbors and where we get more, the most um, tourist customer arrivals from in North America, um, December 2nd is going to be blistering cold in Canada. Yeah. And it's going to be equally cold in, in some parts of, of America. So what better place to be at, you know, on December 2nd? Mm -hmm. team, the team and I were, were discussing, said, you know, how do we do locally curated yeah. events because we're not just working for the horse racing community, but the external community. Yeah. So we might have a street dance, etc. Yeah, we've got to wrap the segment now, but yeah. just quickly, um, this, this uh, race day is going to be live on Fox Sports. Fox 5? Yes. Which is a first for Jamaican racing, I think. Yeah, so we definitely know it's going to be on Fox Sports. Yes. Um, what Fox does with their scheduling yeah. for the Belmont, they took the Belmont away from NBC this year. And... Um, so they are live on Fox Sports during the day. And Sports Max. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. Sure we're getting we get there. We're getting there. there. <laughs> <laughs> we have to save the best for last. Yeah. Thanks. So they, they usually start on Fox Sports. Yes. And then when the prime time event happens, which is a cigar mile to be followed by the Mutia mile, they would switch over to Fox. And it's Fox 5 in New York. Um, we've been dealing with Naira, so we cannot say Fox 5. Um, but it may be broadcast throughout the yeah. Entire platform of Fox. Yeah. Um, it's a big coup for us. We've been working on that from mm. since March. Yes. We were told verbally that we would have it in May. But you know, when when you're a little boy is there and trying to make the team, you know you have to wait. So we got yeah. the call and yeah. we made the announcement yeah. and we're very happy about that. Yeah. But we're not going to forget Sports Max. Yeah. I had to come here personally today to sh to share the information with you. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have our Caribbean people, and we're, we, we told you that we had a big plan to get this product out, 
to expose Jamaicans, to expose um, Jamaican horse racing professionals that do very well on the North American circuit. Yes. And, um, you know, this augurs well for yeah, Jamaica well, and for horse racing. Yeah, well, Solo, we're going to leave it here. We're out of time for this segment. <laughs> um, Mariah, we were saying at the top of the show that uh, in the post-race interview, we will likely get Mariah we to mount uh, a horse and do the interview with the winning rider, as we see on NBC and ESPN. So she's we have a horse in studio. Yeah, so she's <laughs> she's she's getting accustomed to the feel of the horses, and um, uh, let's see if that works out for the second of. And the horse looks enthusiastic. So I'm going to give he you a likes secret. Me. Yeah, he 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 looks ready for Mariah to mount. Just walk with some candy in your pocket. Yeah. Go to the horse. Do your hand like this. Put the candy in your hand. He'll eat it. He's going to smell it first. Yeah. Don't move your hand. Don't be scared. It won't bite you. And then he's going to have the candy. And then you can do anything you want to with that horse after. Oh, wow. Great time. <laughs> <laughs> Is that easy?